so viral hemorrhagic fevers as you all know is a, a group of febrile illnesses and rna viruses are from four families these are highly infectious virus and they can cause from relatively asymptomatic disease to almost potentially lethal syndromes now this lethal syndromes uh, syndrome would consist of fever myalgia uh, vomiting mucosal and gi bleeding hypotension and edema the most notorious of the famous one was the ebola virus which was uh, detected very recently and it created a havoc but thankfully it is controlled now now usually these uh, viral uh, virus illnesses are uh, contracted from infected animals or arthropod vector and they are transmitted usually through the international travel nosocomial outbreaks so this is the uh, line diagram which shows the viral hemorrhagic fevers usually these are the rna viruses uh, which consists of your uh, filoviruses arena viruses gunia viruses and flavi viruses we are interested in one yellow fever which is not there in india as yet then filoviruses contains your ebola and marburg uh, arena virus lassa virus gunia virus your rift valley fever in congo crimean fever and flavi viruses which contains your dengue fever so what are the common features which we can see in uh, all these viral hemorrhagic fevers one is the transmission so they are transmitted uh, again by rodents or arthropods uh, they can be can uh, transmitted through contact with the natural reservoirs excretions secretions blood reservoirs or intermediate host and they can be obviously transferred from person to person so today the main topic is dengue uh, hemorrhagic fever or the dengue fever and which we'll discuss in detail in this class so what is uh, basically how is it transmitted so it is uh, mostly transmitted it's most prevalent in the mosquito borne viral disease one of the most important ones uh, over 50 million patients uh, have been affected with dengue per year and it is endemic in more than 100 countries which is more in tropical and subtropical countries which includes india and south east uh, southeast asian countries so what is the history of dengue dengue was first described in 1780 and the virus was isolated by sabin in 1944 so there is an increase incidence in the tropical regions of asia africa central and south america and like india which is uh, the endemic of uh, a dengue fever and there are four serotypes of this disease now this is the pictorial diagram of the uh, world map which shows that this is the area the red ones where the epidemic or the endemic activity is there which includes your india and the neighboring countries some parts of australia and south america and africa now what causes dengue dengue is usually caused by dengue uh, viral fever and it has got four very closely related but antigenically different serotypes den 1 2 3 and 4 and they are of the genus flavivirus now infection if you have uh, the important or the interesting uh, fact about this is that if you have uh, infection with one of the uh, serotypes then you will have that immunity for the rest of your life so you can have dengue fever only four times in your life the vector again everybody knows is the aedes aegypti it's a domestic day biting mosquito it prefers to feed on humans uh, and the infection it is a clinical picture which ranges from non specific viral syndrome to fatal hemorrhagic disease this you all uh, learn in microbiology the uh, diagram of flavi virus or uh, it is a spherical uh, 40 to 60 mm in diameter it's a positive sense a single rna it is uh, high the rna in this uh, virus is infectious it is an enveloped virus and replication is in the cytoplasm how uh, now how do the infection spreads so usually the disease starts in the rainy season uh, when the mosquitoes are abundant especially in the tropical countries uh, it generally occurs in the water holding receptacles or in plants which are close to the human dwellings uh, a female aedes mosquito it feeds upon the human and after a uh, period of around 8 to 14 days the 
infection transmits. Now the important one is the pathophysiology. So how does uh, this virus cause the pathophysiology from non or asymptomatic patients to almost lethal or the dengue hemorrhagic fever which is the most dreaded complication. So what happens is once you have the uh, infection the vascular bed is that this is really important. Now what happens is that once you have the infection there are so many cytokines which are released and there is a microvascular damage and there is increased vascular perme permeability. So all the serocytes, pleural effusion, ascites which you see or the capillary leak syndrome which you see in dengue is because of this increase in the vascular permeability. Now all the other signs and symptoms may depend on the uh, virus family and the species. So there would be an initial febrile illness then hemorrhagic skin lesions and which includes your mucous membranes, orifices and effusion. Widespread necrosis can be there and it involves your lymphoid system, uh, lung, uh, kidney and uh, the blood system extensively and there could be thrombocytopenia in these patients. Now come we come to the clinical manifestations. Now the clinical manifestations of uh, dengue are usually the important one is your fever, high grade fever with chills, severe headache, muscle and joint pains, nausea, vomiting and eye pain. Usually you have a characteristic retroorbital pain which is which patients very frequently complains and low backache. So incubation period is usually between 4 to 7 days. The fever it starts usually with malaise, chills and headache. You have severe backache, joint pains and muscular pain and pain in the eyeball. It is uh, also known as myalgia may be so severe that patient experiences a deep bony pain. So this is also called as breakbone fever which is the characteristic of this disease. High grade temperature may persist for 3 to 5 days. Now this could be a self limiting condition or it could, uh, ex it could be exaggerated up to a dengue hemorrhagic fever or dengue shock syndrome. Okay. So now uh, in 1997 the WHO has classified dengue as dengue without warning signs, dengue with warning signs and severe dengue. So a patient who comes to you with fever, rash or the particular rash, aches and pains, leukopenia or a positive tonic weight test. If he has at least two of these following signs and symptoms, then you call it dengue without warning signs. Please go through this list again. You have fever and any two of the following which says either you have nausea or vomiting, rash, aches and pains, leukopenia or a positive tonic weight test. Any one of these, any two of these plus fever would, con would include in the uh, dengue without warning signs. Now comes your dengue with warning signs. This is important. Any dengue as defined as above plus any of the following abdominal pain or tenderness, persistent vomiting, clinical fluid accumulation because of capillary leak syndrome like ascites or pleural effusion again would categorize you into dengue uh, with warning signs or mucosal bleed. Again this is very important clinical fluid accumulation in the form of ascites or pleural effusion. Persistent vomiting or abdominal tenderness is also important. Again uh, in warning signs the patient can have lethargy or restlessness, liver enlargement or there could be an increase in hematocrit. This you should not miss. Any increase in hematocrit with a rapid decrease in platelet count would consider, we would consider it as dengue with warning signs. So this is the time when you have to act very quickly. Severe dengue, so dengue with at least one of the following criteria. Dengue fever with a severe plasma leakage leak, uh, leading to shock which is called as dengue shock syndrome or fluid accumulation with respiratory distress. So this is severe dengue. So we have dengue with warning signs, dengue without warning signs and severe dengue. And severe dengue would include your dengue shock syndrome. Or any of the liver involvement, uh, organ involvement like uh, lung, CNS and heart. So this is the picture where the patient can present with rashes like this. 
this is because of the capillary leak now dengue hemorrhagic fever few words about it dengue hemorrhagic fever is commonly seen in children it is initially pre it presents as classic dengue infection but the condition rapidly deteriorates and the patient may have high mortality or morbidity in adults the presence of antibodies now who would get a dengue how do we control dengue fever you have to control the mosquito breeding places you have to use anti mosquito measure use of insecticides and you have to use screened windows and doors okay so this is all about dengue fever and infection thank you very much